Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We've got Kaya back with us. How's it going guys? And we are here to talk about CMMG's latest, The Descent. Now, uh, we did have the opportunity to go out to CMMG. They hosted an event out there. Um, it was their 20th annual, or 20th, I guess you could say, anniversary celebration, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also had this like little after party. Um, the, uh, it was called the Sausage Fest. Um, they were literally serving sausage, and it was it was really good, right? It was awesome. Okay. Uh, but there was a few of us that went out there, um, and we, we got to meet up with Nate, gun drummer, Kendall Jones was out there, Jen. I mean, it was just awesome. And uh, the guys hosting it, uh, Mike was there, who we've interviewed before. Uh, Calder and Devin was great. You guys saw Devin when I, uh, <clears throat> you know, won the long range competition out there. Uh, but anyway, there's three of us that won. It wasn't just me. But no, <laughs> anyway, we got to shoot quite a few of these guns. And uh, I absolutely loved the Descent. It's a really neat design. Uh, we've seen other designs out there similar to this as well because it's still a DI system, like your regular AR-15s and whatnot. But you'll notice there's no buffer tube. It's a bufferless system. And uh, when you see that, you're kind of like, well, how is it DI and still able to do that? And, uh, and it's, again, not piston driven, it's direct impingement, right? So initial thought is it's it's not supposed to work, or maybe it works like once, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, here we are. So I think the easiest way of going about this is uh, to kind of open it up and show you guys, but before we do that, I just want to let you know we will be taking this to the range and shooting it, and of course it's 300 blackout, and we will be including a uh, suppressor, silencer, while shooting, like you saw in the intro. Um, we will be switching out the muzzle device. We've got a two-chamber brake here by Surefire also. SPS 300 can, it's a linear comp, so it's not like, you know, we need to show off that too much, I guess. But uh, that's what it comes with. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and open this up and show you guys exactly what's happening as far as the internals go. You've shot this one, before, yes. right? Well, I haven't okay. shot this specific, this exact gun, okay. but I have shot the Descent and 300 Blackout, yes. Okay. Yeah, and it does come with a 30 round mag. I just have one of these cool Lancer 20 rounds because it matches and it looks cool. So there you have it. All right, now, as you can tell, right from the get-go, it's a little bit different. Don't mean to be flagging you, sorry, Kaya, but obviously it's clear. Yep. And let's just go ahead and pop this out. Bam. Now, really a very different design compared to a buffer system, right? Obviously. Yes. All things on the upper receiver, which is super cool. Yeah, it's and great. and right too, because if you'd wanted just to buy the upper receiver, you can do that, and it'll attach to just about any of your mil spec AR lowers, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. uh, we might try that out also on a different gun, uh, but anyway, this is the whole system here. That's a pretty neat design. This is what uh, CMMG is called, and it's a patent pending design uh, called their Combat Action Combat compact action <laughs> technology, uh, and bam. I was thinking CAT, CAT, combat application tourniquet too, but you know, whatever. And the uh, strike face on this one is kind of inside as opposed to the MCX. Right, well, is... so you've got a gas key in this case, yeah. right? So the MCX being like a short short piston driven design utilizes a very similar looking bolt okay. carrier group, but you'll notice, and you can even see this right here has yeah. a divot, little indent right up front, that allows for an actual piston or op rod to make a contact with. And then that inertia transfers that energy into the bolt carrier group that you see here. And then again, very similar situation mm -hmm. happening here. As you guys can see, you got those two rods here, the guide rods that are riding on that spring system. And that allows the bolt carrier group to move, extract the previous round, pick up and chamber the next round, right? Again, Pretty similar, yeah. Looks pretty similar, mm -hmm. but also slightly little, couple of few differences as well. Again, this is being utilized in an MCX. So again, strike face up front for that piston to hit, mm -hmm. short stroke piston versus a DI. And then on top of that, you'll notice on this guy, you've actually got right in here, there's a firing pin block, a safety. So the, C, the firing pin itself cannot actually be struck if you will, uh, unless the hammer rides and makes contact with this block. And I can kind of show you guys that moving just a little bit there, all right? So pretty neat uh, design that uh, SIG has with the MCX. Now, because this is still a DI gun, and I can show you that, I'm gonna get my dirty hands all over this. It's okay, we're gonna shoot it anyway. But in here, you can still see that there's a gas tube that rides right inside the upper receiver, just like your AR-15s, because essentially same operating system. 
And so this is a gas key that allows that gas tube to actually go into. Compare that to your standard bolt carrier group, which again, this, the whole operating system uh, is almost as big as the bolt carrier group itself yep. uh, for your standard AR. So you still have a gas key, but it's just going to be uh, on either side of it is your guide rods to actually, your, in a sense, your buffer system, right? which is a pretty neat design. So CMMG, I think, did a really cool job with that. Again, gas tube rides right in here. Gases insert into the system here and then cause that to blow back, as you see, and then comes and rides right back forward. Pretty interesting. Very, very good. Yeah. Uh, it seems, I mean, I'd love to see uh, how reliable that is yeah. over time, just yeah. to try it out, because I'm used to all that uh, good old buffer system, right? right? But that, like the MCX, oh my God. It, it looks complex, however, uh, great innovation. Yeah. You remove that whole stock thing out of the picture. Right, yeah, Perfect. exactly, yeah. needing any of that. So just yeah. a pick rail on the back. Yeah. But um, I say let's go ahead and uh, load up some mags, take it to the range, let's shoot it. Absolutely. Yeah. Kai, we did say that shooting the uh, 3 and a blackout cartridge unsuppressed is pretty much worthless, right? That's what you said. That yeah, is what I said. Yep, I absolutely love silencers and uh, repeal the NFA. Anyway, all right, so what we've got is the Descent, which is a really cool gun. What Now, I've, we've already talked about it a little bit in the video room, and we're out here at the range just to show it off a little bit more to you guys. Kai, you go ahead and take a couple of shots. Tell me what you think, especially that trigger. I do have a question for you, though. Yeah. Why are you wearing the plate carrier? Why are we dressed up the way we are? Yeah, um, we may have just got done shooting our uh, top 10 guns of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So if you are interested to see our take on that, because we're taking the COD guns in IRL. So, uh, is that how you, in real life? So I just said in, in real life. So the COD guns IRL. I'm trying to be hip and cool. Is, is it working? <laughs> That's uh, fantastic, dude. Kids yeah, still say hip lot. too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyway, shoot All the right. Descent, tell us what you think. Here's the deal. I've never shot the Descent, guys. This is gonna be my first time. In fact, three on a blackout, suppressed. Is, that, is this your first time shooting? First time, oh first time. God. Let's You're see it. For a treat. <sighs> Actually, you know what? Before you do it, have you shot three on a blackout unsuppressed? Negative. Give me the gun. All right. <laughs> That's what we'll do are you, first. Well, what are, you, are you trying to set me up with something here? No, I'm just trying to tell it, you that... Uh, your gloves. No, I'm just trying to tell you that... Uh, try it unsuppressed, and then we're going to throw the can on it so you get a little bit of a difference. Notice the two-chamber break? Yep. I'm stepping back. Enjoy that. All right. All right. This is... Uh, what is this? 8.6-inch uh, barrel? Yeah, it's pretty Six short. 6-inch barrel? Something yeah. like that? Okay. It's a really short barrel, guys, and I got a little break over here and three on a blackout, unsuppressed. Clint. You got this, dude. All right. All right, I think we're all tired of that. All right, you know what? <laughs> Give me that can. It's still a little spicy. Are um, uh, we uh, clear? Yep, we're good. Clear. Right, cool. Take it. Thank you, sir. Here's the... Uh, good. I right. will go grab the other mag. I got him. You got it? Perfect. Yeah. I come prepared, dude. Get in there. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. So now, suppressed. Have fun with that. All right, let's see how it is with suppressed. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Even unsuppressed, it wasn't bad. Whew. Let's find out. Ooh. That sound, that reverb that I was getting, it sounded awesome. I am loving it, right? Yeah. Spress, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm very used to 5.56. This is, oh my yeah, God. It's a be... completely different world. And you know what? Uh, smells and tastes pretty good. Oh, all that uh, gas. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I did not I did notice it was a little gassy. Now, yeah. there is something we could do about that though, right? Yes. So 300 Blackout, guys, the, with the uh, CMMG Descent, the 300 Blackout version comes with adjustable gas block. Yeah. Right here, just the 300 Blackout though, not the other caliber options, for suppressed and unsuppressed uh, versions. So you can go ahead and uh, adjust the gas block and to suppressed fire or unsuppressed fire. What do you think? Uh, you wanna... Well, I think what we'll do really quick is actually do a little bit of a comparison. Yep. So right now I've got in my hand, and I'll try to show this guys to you the best that I can. Here is a supersonic 147 grain 300 blackout cartridge. Compare that to the subsonic 200 grain. Notice the significant projectile difference 
and length there, trying to hold that up the best that I can. You're trying to get that extra weight behind this heavier projectile, so that way it slows it down enough to be exactly. subsonic. That's 200 grand, right? Yep, so I'm gonna do uh, every other round. One sub, one spicy, and then one sub again. You're going to have a sub. You're going to have a sub in here. Yeah. But you know what? I don't think you're gonna have one. No. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. That one's your uh, supersonic that's, there. That's right. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, dude, this charging handle right up front. It, <laughs> it's just so much better. I'm so used to obviously the AR style, right? But man, right here. All right. Love it. So there you go. You want to go for got, it? Oh, you you show them the difference. I've maybe shot this a time or two. All right, so the first round's gonna be a subsonic. Second round's gonna be a supersonic, and then sub, and then super, and then sub. Just try it, and let's see if you guys can audibly hear the difference. That's right. So other than it being audibly different, I can also tell too when shooting sub versus super, and I can see it, hopefully you guys will be able to see it also, is the difference in recoil. And you okay. should be able to feel that also. So let's go ahead and just aim down range real quick. The first round you've got in there is a uh, subsonic. Okay. So we're gonna hear that again, and let's also pay attention to what type of recoil we might actually be visualizing while Kaya is shooting. So let's All see. All right, first round is gonna be subsonic. Yes. All right. I believe I have it. All right, super. Oh yeah. So keep going, keep going so they can see that. All right. All right, uh, got a that. little. So, <laughs> so a little, uh, make sure you got it clean, that's for sure, because that sub just didn't have enough oomph to yep. go ahead and cycle the gun. So go ahead and let it go forward. All right, All right so we're good to go. Yeah, good. All right, and all supers are left, so just those all two. Right. So we're clear now. So I could tell, but then again, I'm also getting it from the perspective back here, you know? Mm -hmm. Let us know down in the comment sections if you could tell, but as far as I'm concerned, subsonic 300 blackouts where it's at. However, mm, as we noticed, if you don't tune your gun for that, you might have a reliability issue. So make sure that if you do have an adjustable gas block like the Descent does, kudos to CMMG there, uh, you might want to tune that so that way if whatever type of load you might be running, whether it's still case 300 blackout, some real dirty, nasty stuff, some real nice high speed supersonic stuff or some subs, you'll be able to tune your gas system to run whatever you need it to run reliably, which is fantastic. Now, how about the trigger? How's the trigger feel? Yeah, this Trigger Tech uh, two-stage trigger is amazing. Dude, it's just short. It's got a tiny little bit of a take up, right? Just, uh, let me show it my right hand. See that? Well, let's go, it's clear, clear. So, just that's it. I don't know if you guys can tell, yeah, but. Before you hit that wall. Just right here. And then apply pressure. And then here. just. Nice, and then what about just, the reset? Uh, let me do the reset. Coming back. Right here. Oh yeah. yeah, it's extremely short. <laughs> extremely short, man. It's a, you know what? Overall, there is nothing negative I can say. Just adjust your, uh, yeah, your gas block for right. your subsonic rounds. That's it. Uh, mm. It's not really the gun's fault, so you just gotta no. adjust. We haven't yeah. done it though, so we also haven't oiled this thing yeah. up or anything. Yeah, clean so. it up a little bit too. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna keep running it. I say we actually just keep running it, running it, running it until we actually start getting some uh, some failures and really put this thing through its paces. So just a quick overview, one more time, guys. Uh, it does have the left hand side charging handle. A right side option is available if you would like that. Also, you do have the Ambi Safety, Ambi Mag Release right over here. Not an Ambi Bolt Release, which I did tell CMMG. I'm like, you know, guys, you might want to think about that. Just Throwing that out there, you do have the oversized and extended mag release, which you and I, Kai, have both talked about. We're a big, big fan of that. Mm -hmm. Now, something like that, too, where some guys might be like, I don't know if I like that too much, is if you're a left-handed operator, right? Yeah. Next thing you know, you've got this thing against your kid or anything like that. Yeah. If it hits it, you might be dropping your mag unintentionally, yeah. right? So that's something to be considered. But as far as I'm concerned, if you look at where that's, take a look at the brass deflector. I'm hoping that if anything's going to be making contact with the side of the gun, it's going to hit the brass deflector before it actually hits the mag release. Mm -hmm. That's just in my mind, right? Everything else about this gun, though, is just awesome. You know and what I like? Yeah. What else I liked is the uh, selector lever for the safety and fire selector yeah, lever. It's super slim. It's a very low profile. Yeah. It's really good. Well, you and I were talking before, the problem you have with some yep. ambi safeties is when you go to flip it, it's interacting with your knuckle over here. Yeah. And so what I've done, because I've worked with those clunky ones before, you know, what I've done is just kind of always like, just kind of like manipulate my yep. hand just a little bit differently. And I'm, I'm pretty like high up on the, uh, this beaver tail, the tang area. 
I go really high up and I fingers off the trigger, right? So when I go safe, I mean uh, fire, it always, some ambient safeties, they always just touch my knuckle right here. It kind of gets in the way like this, right? And CMMG did a fantastic job. Really slim profile. Doesn't really affect me, obviously. You were yeah. good to go. So. Yeah, now it works with me well. Yeah. So we'll leave it off there. Let us know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Again, we want to thank CMMG and Devin and Calder and everybody out there for inviting us out there and having a pretty good time. Maybe you'll go next year, all right? I mean, Hopefully, yeah. please. <laughs> so something slightly bigger, but the similar color uh, is the Barrett M107 that we're currently giving away. Yes, the 50 BMG semi-auto magazine fed recoil operated awesomeness that it is can be for yours at no cost along with the Trigicon AccuPoint and the Reptilla mount for that. So ClassicFarms.com is where you can get your entries. Click that top banner and uh, one of the very many entry methods that we have is by utilizing a code word which is what again Kaya? 5050 50, guys. 5050. 50. That's because it's also coming with 50 rounds of 50 cal. That's gallon. right. That's because, right. you know, we figured one of the biggest complaints we get is that's great. You know, good luck trying to feed the thing. Well, now you got 50 rounds to start you off. So, well, you know, th there you go. You know, I, I have nothing more to say. You? I put your name in that giveaway. It's a 50 <laughs> caliber. They're 50 you're, BMG. Yeah, you're, I, no, you're no longer uh, qualified. I know. Way. I was just yeah. telling Ryan, like, yes. I, I want to put my name in there. It's a, okay, guys, 50 BMG Barrett with 50 additional rounds. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. Yep. So don't miss out on that, guys. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. There it is. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.